especially those of an epic 10-year battle between the soldiers of Greece and a fortress city called Troy. Hi, I'm Josh Bernstein. I've come here to Greece to find out if the stories of the Trojan War could possibly be true. The story of the Trojan War recalls an age of powerful kingdoms on the shores of the Aegean Sea. Greek Mycenae and Troy. It's a tale of war nearly 3,000 years old, all fought over a Greek princess named Helen. She leaves her husband and her home for Troy with her lover, a Trojan prince named Paris. Her actions wreak grave consequences. King Agamemnon gathers soldiers from across the Greek empire and launches an all-out attack on Troy. War rages for 10 long years, until the hero Odysseus brings the fighting to an end with a clever trick. The Greeks sneak into Troy in the belly of a wooden horse. They burn the city to the ground and take Helen back to Greece. It's one of history's oldest and most famous stories. But is it true? To find out, I've come to Athens, Greece, to the American School of Classical Studies. Here, copies of two ancient epic poems called the Iliad and the Odyssey are stored. Between them, these two books tell the story of the Trojans and the Greeks, of the war over Helen, and Odysseus's long journey home. Ah, so this is where all the rare books are kept. Yes, this is the Mambilas rare book room, and here is where we keep the Homer. Created in Florence, Italy in 1488, this is one of only three remaining copies on Earth from the first ever printing of the Iliad and the Odyssey. Looks like uh, handwriting, but it's actual yeah, printing. You done on a printing press. But it's not the first written, you said, right? No. It no, existed in, in what form prior right. to Right. Well, we have fragments of the text of Homer on papyri found in the sands of Egypt mm -hmm. that uh, the earliest at probably the third century BC. The first word, right? Dr. Stephen Tracy, the director of the school, tells me that more than 2,000 years before this book was printed, a single mysterious man told the story of the Trojan War in a song. Around 725 B.C., late 8th century, this man comes along, whom we call Homer, who had an incredible gift, who was so fluent in this oral art that he could sing mm -hmm. a huge, long song. We know nothing really about him. Uh, we don't even know if this was his name. The name Homer comes down to us today from Greek historians of the classical age. But his songs recall an age even older. Homer sang of a world that was ancient history, even for the Greeks who built these famous columns and theaters. He recalled civilizations from the dawn of human history. A war story from around 1250 BC. And a city that early scholars dismissed as fantasy. But could Troy have been a real place? Could Homer's stories be true? If they are, then a whole world of ancient kingdoms and brave armies lie waiting to be discovered. And I'm joining the hunt to find them. Homer placed Troy in what we now call Turkey, on the other side of the Aegean Sea, roughly 200 miles southwest of what's now Istanbul. He sang of a massive city strong-walled at the edge of a windy plain. It rested at the southern coast of the Hellespont, a narrow strip of water connecting the Aegean Sea and the Sea of Marmara, what is now called the Dardanelles. The search for Homer's Troy began on a large scale at the end of the 19th century, with a German businessman turned archaeologist named Heinrich Schliemann. Schliemann amassed a huge fortune in business, and he spent it trying to prove that Homer sang about real places and real events. And in 1870, Heinrich Schliemann came here, 
with the Iliad and Odyssey as his guide. He was convinced that the unassuming hill directly behind me was nothing less than the legendary city of Troy. Schliemann was on a hunt for the treasures of the Trojan kingdom and for proof that the war Homer described actually took place. Following clues from the Iliad and the Odyssey, he believed that both Troy and proof of a great war could be found here. With teams of more than 100 local workers, he dug a massive trench straight through the side of this hill. So this is the infamous trench. This was exactly the trench which he dug okay. at the time. Dr. Yashar Ersoy is an archaeologist and an expert on Schliemann's excavations here in Turkey. He decides to cut this huge trench right through this mound, yeah? yeah? I can see how far down he went. I see these rock walls. This is, this is as far as he got, right? These rock walls here? That is right. Okay. That is right. And those are apparently the earliest remains so far he had reached at the site, and they were dating to the early Bronze Age. And what's going through Schliemann's mind at the time? His, ma his main mission was identifying the city of Troy. He was hoping to find, to prove that the stories that Homer told to us were basically realities. In search of Homer's fortress city, Schliemann dug over the course of seven years. His excavations were later condemned as some of the most destructive in the history of archaeology. But he unearthed the remains of an ancient civilization, reminiscent of Homer's descriptions of Troy. And he was thrilled to discover the treasures of an ancient aristocracy. For Schliemann, this collection of gold could belong only to the royal family of Homer's epic. He draped the jewels on his own Helen of Troy, his young wife Sophia. But it turned out they weren't quite what he thought. He was wrong with his assumption, especially in terms of his dating. This treasury was almost a thousand years earlier than the time when Priam, Priam lived. But he didn't know that, right? Absolutely not. Archaeologists believe the Iliad and the Odyssey describe a time around 1250 BC. But new scientific dating techniques have determined that the treasures Schliemann discovered were nearly 1,000 years older than that. The gold didn't come from the time Homer described. But that doesn't mean Schliemann was wrong about the place. Within his massive trench, later archaeologists have discovered multiple levels of civilization here, a series of ancient cities all built, over time, on the very same hill. And basically, what we learned is the fact that Troy apparently had a long history of occupation, and excavators identified nine levels at the site from the 3rd millennium BC until the Roman Imperial era. So this shows that for 3,200 years, civilizations rebuilt themselves one on top of the other. That is exactly the case. In all, nine separate city levels have been discovered here, dating from 2900 BC all the way to around 550 AD. These findings have shown this location to be the largest and longest occupied human settlement in the area. But is it Homer's Troy? So Yashar, is this the Troy that Homer was writing about? Well, both the archeological evidence as well as the historical sources mm -hmm strongly suggests the fact that it is the best candidate for the region mm -hmm. as well as for the geography. And apparently Troy is so far the largest site we know of from this area, northwest of Asia Minor. Okay. And Homer's writings confirm, I guess, how he describes Troy, right? They would confirm this location. Indeed so, yeah. Huh. If Homer did write about a real city, it's most likely the Bronze Age fortress here. But finding the city of Troy and finding proof of the Trojan War are two very different things. And like Schliemann, 
Later archaeologists have failed to find strong evidence here of Homer's 10-year war. The search for truth in the Iliad and the Odyssey shifted outside the walls of Troy to the earliest civilizations of Greece. And that's where I'm heading next. I'm on a hunt for the warriors who fought the Trojan War, using clues from the Iliad and the Odyssey. In Turkey, I followed the trail of the poet Homer to the ruins of an ancient city. I learned that buried treasure had been discovered, and that a Bronze Age kingdom existed in the very place Homer described. Now I'm off to continue my search on the other side of the sea. Because if stories of the Trojan War are true, then the walls of Troy were toppled by the Greeks. And the Greeks had a kingdom of their own. I'm now searching for the city of King Agamemnon, which Homer described as Mycenae, rich in gold. Homer sang that the kingdom of Mycenae rested between two ancient landmarks. It was in the north of a plain called the Argive and south of an area still called Corinthia, in what is now the Greek Peloponnese. Once more, I find myself on the path of Heinrich Schliemann, who followed these clues in 1876, three years after his discoveries at Troy. I've discovered, just as Schliemann did, that the trail of Homer's clues once again lead to the ruins of a Bronze Age city. Mycenae has been on the map at this location for more than 3,000 years. Dr. Vasiliki Pliatsika has been excavating here since 1999. So what did this place look like when Schliemann showed up? Well, the gate was cleared. It was cleared in 1841, so he could see the gate and see the lintel and see the triangle. Mm -hmm. This is pretty much the picture he saw. Schliemann was certain this impressive gate was the entrance to the great kingdom of the Greeks. This emblem of these lions was already here. That's right. What it basically says is that the lions are protecting the royal house of Mycenae, which rules by divine right. In the Iliad, it's King Agamemnon himself who gathers armies from across the states of Greece to launch the attack on Troy. And for Schliemann, proof of Homer's Mycenae would come from finding great wealth and evidence that the mighty king could have lived and ruled here. Passing through the Lion's Gate, one can't miss the site where Schliemann and another huge team launched the first major excavation of this buried city. 125 workmen working for him. 125. He quickly cleared this enormous area just behind the Lion's Gate. He wasn't. He was paying people to do that for him. Okay. And at the bottom of this very grave, Heinrich Schliemann made a discovery beyond his wildest expectations. 31 pounds of gold and beautifully wrought golden death masks. Wait, so he's got bones, he's got gold, what does he think? Well, he thinks these are royal burials, and he thinks he's found a Memnon's burial. But why? Like, why, 